So, hi everyone, welcome back to the second part of the session for the Click Day today. Um, next we have Dr Stephen Page from Leeds General Infirmary. Um, he's a consultant cardiologist and electrophysiologist there. He's the lead adult cardiologist for the regional ICC service and Yorkshire. He's a member of the Clinical Advisory Group for Cardiomyopathy UK and a trustee for the Community Heartbeat Trust. And he is the new AICC president. So welcome, Stephen. Um, and we're looking forward to hearing you talk today about the AICC National Service Directory. Thanks very much, Stephanie. Um, and, and thanks to you both for, for the invite. Um, am I am my slides up? Are we ready to go? We've got a, we've got a blank screen at the moment. <laughs> Oh dear. I can actually see the slides on this end. Oh, great. Can you? It's OK. Oh, yes. oh yeah. You know, now we can see them. Now they're just great. OK, present. excellent. So um, so I, I'm going to I'm going to talk about uh, a, a relatively new initiative that the AICC have 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 been leading on. Um, we developed over the last couple of years. Um, now, for, for, for the sort of the trainees, this isn't something you need to learn. It's not something that you can be tested on. Um, but I think it is worth thinking about data and how we collect it, and and in particularly uh, some of the challenges about collecting data and, and how hard it can be. Now, the the sort of the context behind this is really important. Um, so I'll just briefly start with that. For fifty. Sorry, Stephen, to interrupt you. Um, can yeah. we, we did the pre these slides aren't in presentation mode on our end, at least. I'm not sure okay, if they are sorry. your end. How's that? Just get, uh, might just be working its magic. <laughs> no, nothing's changed our end yet. No, it's not changing. OK. Let me try again. Is that any better? No, I wonder, Stephen, if your connection might be a little slow because also your image is a little fuzzy, so I don't know if that might be it, but. Um, OK. That I, I, I can see you clicked on presentation mode, yeah. so <laughs> okay. yeah. Well, I tell you what, um, let me see if I can just get the this bigger. Um, I think we'll just let's just carry on like that. I think we can see the slides well enough anyway. Me. OK. So um, so the last 50 or 60 years or so um, has seen a, uh, a you know, huge sort of scientific breakthrough in terms of our ability to describe uh, and and, and recognize and diagnose the clinical phenotypes um, and more latterly uh, recognize and identify the genotypes. Um, so there's been a lot of progress in, in, in the scientific end and more recently over the last sort of 15, 20 years or so, we've started to focus more on, on, on um, service development. And um, there've been you know, some, some important initiatives in this regard, uh, new guidelines, commissioning documents, policy statements, developments in genomic medicine, um, the way the NHS has sort of prioritised genomic medicine uh, has, ha has, has, has clearly had an impact. Um, and we are now on the verge of being able to, to, to provide increasingly specialised uh, therapy and small molecule therapy are about to reach the clinic. So, so there's been a lot of going on. It's a very exciting time to work in this field. But there's a real absence of a detailed understanding of service provision and service delivery. We've got lots of good science, we've got lots of treatment, we've got lots of um, uh, energy, but what we don't have or haven't had until recently is, is a good understanding of where services are, who's providing them and, and what they're doing. Now, there is no national audit for ICC and um, I, th we, I think we're an outlier here as a subspecialty of cardiology. Um, you know, there is a well-established process for routine uh, systematic data collection um, within other subspecialties in cardiology, and, and, and we fall behind in that respect. Now, the, the existing 
um, NICOR data sets are, are generally around procedural based subspecialties. So th th there's a sort of a clear um, advantage that they have there. It's much easier to collect um, and count routine procedures. Um, but the heart failure uh, community are have now sort of dipped their toe in the water and have started to collect mine app, uh, sorry, uh, NICOR data. And um, and and therefore, I, I think I think we really have to look very hard at uh, at the ICC field so that we don't fall behind in this respect. So now this won't work if it's not in presentation mode, but um, I can talk you through it. So, so imagine you're Steve Powis, medical director of the of the NHS, and you are wanting to focus your interest. Uh, on ICC services. Um, so, so what 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 might he want to to have a handle on? Well, he'd he'd want to know where ICC services are being delivered. So the green dots. Um, he'd want to know what they were doing, what services were being provided. He'd want to know which of these regional centres is a national referral centre or is providing um, particularly specialist treatment providing surgical myectomy, for example, or cardiac sympathectomy. They'd want to know or have a handle on activity. So how much how much work is being delivered? How what, what's the what's the scale of ICC service delivery nationally and regionally? They'd want to understand what services look like. How are they configured? Um, do you have single tertiary or quaternary referral centers that, that pull all the patients into the into the into that particular specialist clinic or are they based on a hub and spoke model where they where they're trying to devolve some of that uh, expertise to to smaller uh, local hospitals um, do we know how to contact these services have we got their their the the, the referral information you might want to start thinking about disease registries but you would certainly, if you were an NHS leader, want to know about outcomes and some sort of measure of how effective these services are. So, so if that if that's the sort of the idealised view and that's the aspiration, well, how, how could you deliver that? Well, there are a number of possible mechanisms. Um, one of those might be through NHS England. Um, NHS England provides service specifications for commissioners and the, the existing commissioning documents 10 years old, that's being rewritten currently. And, and it may be, and there's certainly um, uh, some appetite for this, is to try and include uh, routine systematic data collection within the NHS England service specifications. That's one possible mechanism. But of course it requires funding and, and, and that's where you can start to, to to, to sort of hit hit uh, problems in in taking that forward. Another option would be to, to look at academic centres and um, uh, and this is sort of historically how we've generally collected data in ICC to date. Um, one sort of inherent problem with that is that often academic um, priorities aren't aligned necessarily with clinical priorities or with service delivery priorities. Another option would be to use the charities and, and, and the, the, the charitable organisations have been active in this space. Cardiomopathy UK have recently done a, a, a very large patient survey and, and that they do have that, um, that extra funding and that extra capacity uh, and contacts to be able to, to collect some data. But of course, they are justifiably and understandably um, and inevitably focused on from the patient's perspective rather than service delivery. Um, we, you, you could use the, the existing systems uh, or mechanisms, the, 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 the NICOR data sets, although there are limitations to that and there has historically always been difficulty in, in getting funding for NICOR data sets, but at least it is a uh, sort of a recognised established model and then, of course, the, there's there's the potential role for the AICC, and um, and and that is where we have tried to um, to sort of take this forward. So um, so this is going back to uh, nearly two years ago, where we formed a working group within AICC Council 
um, but 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 wanted to bring in representatives from the devolved nations who weren't sitting on council to make sure that we had representation across the UK. Um, and we then identified lead clinicians from known ICC centres across the UK. Of course, when you're trying to map ICC centres to start with, you don't actually have you know the list of contacts to, to approach it. So it's, you're always going to struggle to get the process started. But with local knowledge, reputation, um, uh, I think we were able to 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 identify uh, the 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 main centres in which ICC activity is being provided and delivered. And then we we distributed a survey um, to those centres, focusing on four specific domains. The first was around service structure. Uh, we looked at staffing. We wanted to try and collect a list of contacts uh, and and particularly uh, sort of detailed information on how you can refer patients to that service to help in um, communication between ICC centres. And we also tried to, to, to capture a little bit about activity and, and that proved to be, to be uh, very challenging. We then collated the responses and, and have um, then created this directory of services. Now, the, 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 the sort of the, the bullet points from the survey were that um, across the UK, there are 31 centres uh, who, who are seen as providing uh, dedicated ICC activity. There are four in Scotland and they've got a very um, coherent, uh, well-structured uh, uh, network of ICC activity across uh, Scotland. There's one centre in Northern Ireland in Belfast. Uh, Wales has a slightly different commissioning structure. It's commissioned through the, the, the genetics service um, and they provide clinical activity in Swansea, Cardiff and Wrexham. And then there were 25 centres in England, um, of which six are in London. 20 of the 31 had um, sort of co-located paediatric services. Um, and of the 31, six uh, were sort of self-styled national referral centres. I think we all sort of know which the big centres are, but you know, in the ICC community, there isn't a process for the sort of designation of, of national referral centre status. The, the sort of previous um, funding mechanisms like um, NSCAG funding that 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 is no longer uh, no no longer relevant what was a previous sort of version of trying to to um, uh, confer national referral centre status on some of the bigger units. The ICC services vary in size quite significantly, um, uh, but most centres serve a catchment area of at least one million. One thing that's really encouraging is that the, the sort of the broad groups of clinical um, patients that, 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 that we're looking to try and provide services for were provided by all 31 centres. I think the only exception was, was Leicester where they didn't have a sort of dedicated neuromuscular clinic, but, but, but other than that, there the really is very good provision for these patients um, in each of these centres. Um, and, and also familial hypercholesterolemia uh, almost exclusively is, is managed outside of ICC services. I think somewhat surprisingly, um, septal reduction therapy is offered in um, about 15 centres, uh, surgical myectomy or, or, or alcohol septal ablation. And I, I think that is a surprising finding, probably indicating that some of those centres are doing relatively small numbers. And also sympathectomy being being offered by 13 centres, which again surprised me. You can then start once you collect the data, you can start to sort of split these centres up to, into sort of sort of broad groups. And you know we have um, you know one group of the sort of the the the, the, the very big national referral centres, St George's, Bart's Heart Centre, and so forth. We've got then sort of high volume clinical centres like Birmingham, Leeds. Um, we've got then newer, smaller centres, uh, Basildon um, in Essex, Bath, Brighton, and and then and then there are, there are some um, centres not captured directly by this survey, but but spoke centres where um, sort of satellite clinic activity is being provided. 
All the data that we've collected is, um, is available on the AICC website. That's the, the web address. And, and essentially, you won't be able to read this um, even, even if it was in presentation mode, but, but essentially you, you can click on the link and you can get into each center and identify um, who the clinicians are, the nursing staff, the genetic team, the pediatricians, the contact details, there can be links to web addresses, uh, the, the sort of websites for that, that particular service, um, and 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 critically, sort of providing um, clear signposting to how to refer patients. So that that all took place about a year ago. Um, we are now about to launch the second version of the national survey. Um, the, the focus will be on updating, validating and expanding the current data that we hold for each service and making sure that it is live and evolves and continues to reflect an accurate uh, representation of ICC activity across the UK. Um, but we want to combine that with, with, with regular national audit projects. Um, one topic that's hotly debated currently is, is about screening and how how we differ in our approaches to screening. And I think a national audit of how screening uh, does change and, and differ across the UK would be very, very informative and help to, uh, to guide policy. Um, and I very much hope this is going to be an annual process. So the National Directory of Services is now live. Um, the first phase, uh, I think, has been to build better links between centres, and I think we've achieved that. Um, this is just the start and and it's a sort of we've got a now a comprehensive overview of what services are provided at national level. Um, but I hope that this will be the beginning of a much more ambitious project to start uh, working towards routine systematic data collection for ICC patients. And that is everything I've got to say on the matter. Thank you very much. <laughs>